I well, almost I mean, put, are we recording? <laughs> are we recording? Yeah, we're recording. Is this the oh, podcast? Because I was going to say, this, it, are yeah. we on the podcast? Yeah. Well, then I got a story to tell you after the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Hey guys, welcome to the Valley Cast. Today we have a very special guest, Mr. Destin Sandlin. Am I saying your name? Hello. Now, Destin, I, we've all met in passing, but Joe was the one that really kind of orchestrated this. And so we'll let Joe kind of take the reins on on, you know, kind of introducing you and and uh and being kind of like the the guy. I mean, we're all going to get to know each other and it's going to be great. We're going to have a great time. Yeah, best but friends. For for people that don't know who you are, do you want to give people just kind of like the elevator pitch about what you do and and who you are? Yeah, sure. I'm an engineer from Alabama. I have a YouTube channel called Smarter Every Day and I'm a dad of four kids. That's about it. That's pretty much it. <laughs> That's yeah. about it. Your elevator pitch just went to the second floor of yeah. the 10-story building that is you. <laughs> That's Maybe so not, not fair. <laughs> as far as contributions to society, I think. I don't well, know you don't about know about that. the kids, Steve. You don't know if they're going to be contributions yeah, to society. Yeah, they, they might be really bad people. You yeah. never know. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Isn't that the craziest part? Do you worry about that a lot, about if your kids will grow up to be jerks? Absolutely. Absolutely. That's like every every dad's nightmare is like, are they going to do the things that I, I taught them to do and not do the things that I also taught them to do? Like, there's so many bad things that I teach my kids. <laughs> it's yeah, so I mean, scary because whenever you see like, and I hate to go so dark, but whenever you see some terrible thing happen and uh, because of one individual and then their parents come on and they're like, we don't uh, know. We I don't just, know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we went to we, church seven days a week. And I mean, he was a little quiet. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's awful. I mean, like, at some point, your kids are their own people, and they have to make their own decisions. And it's like, I, ah, you can only Look, do so uh, much. Benjamin, <laughs> you know, he went to uh, he went to Yale, and and Jenny's a serial killer. Yeah, like, I don't know nothing, what the deal they is. They are who they are. <laughs> yeah. They're both fighting for my love. <laughs> that did get dark. <laughs> Holy crap! What is this podcast? Where are we going here? <laughs> Have you? Uh, well, first of all, we're a bunch of wacky boys. And oh yeah, just, I totally I totally know you guys. Yeah, we have a yeah. great time, and uh, and our podcast is often loose, but. We figured we would make this just a big Destin Love podcast because Holy cow. we we were reading about the things that you do and Joe already knew all the stuff you did but we had to kind of like do a little refresher on on the things that you have made and done and it's very impressive and so we we're just like oh man we we can just shut up and listen to you talk the whole time I don't know about that I don't know that we do that that would be bad you guys you guys bring the heat with the funny man you you guys know what's up I mean I I've enjoyed your stuff for a really really long time Thanks, man. I think it was two 2012 2012 i mean way back you know way back Damn. in the day source fed the whole thing yeah if like, it was 2012 man. that might have been my first vidcon ever yeah it might have been i mean you guys did a live thing if i recall oh, you're not <laughs> oh God. no 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 you guys didn't do a live thing i don't i don't know what you're talking about dude i i gotta tell you man when james hafner came to us and was like hey you guys gotta do something on the main stage at vidcon we were like <laughs> okay cool first of all i don't know what that is and i almost <laughs> lost my mind with anxiety and then everyone was like you guys are funny you guys can figure it out and it was just like Something I wish I could erase from my memory. That was uh, <laughs> that was the first time as an adult that mm. someone told me I needed to be less gay. It was when <laughs> when he did the we did the YouTube thing and I and people were really upset on my behalf and they were like, you can't say that, you know, to some you can't tell them to be less gay. And I was like, well, this is I've had this since high school. It's not that big of a deal, but it was very sweet because everybody was like, no, no, don't do it. But at the end of the day, he was right. I needed to be a little less gay. <laughs> I have no Isn't comments. Isn't it funny I, that you got the I don't know any context here at all. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't it funny the guy that told you to be less gay is now basically like a fundamentalist alt-right? Like Anyway. <laughs> um, Destin, we're going to switch gears here. <laughs> um, I told you we were wacky. Joe, intro what are, <laughs> Yeah, Intro can you tell Joe? us a little? We haven't even really said Smarter Every Day yet, the YouTube channel. Yeah. Um, you've been doing it for ever now 2009 is when you started yeah i think so so uh og youtube stuff like you guys and i started smarter every day i think the channel started back then yeah 2007 is when the channel started wow. pre google owning owning youtube 
And from that moment on, I was just goofing around. And then at some point, I was like, you know, I did this chicken video. I held a chicken and moved my hands around, and the chicken stayed in one spot. And the head? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> what was so crazy is, um, so I was going to school, and I was learning, like, complex math stuff. And so I, I, I picked up this chicken, and I started moving it, and the head stayed in one position. And I was like, holy cow, this explains everything about the equations that I've been learning in school. And so I gave my Whoa. dad a chicken for Father's Day, and I was like, hey, dad, look, vestibular ocular reflex. It's a feedback <laughs> loop, you know, the optical feed. And I was just like, I'm going to make a video about this and put it. I want people to see this. And so I posted the video to the Internet, and it went viral. And it didn't go viral. Like, when you have a, a southern accent, you think things – you think people perceive you differently than they really do. Because I was like, wow, this is a control system. And so I put it on there, and it went viral for people being like, hey, man, you got to look at this chicken plate. You know, this guy's like moving this chicken. And then, and I was like, no, 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 not like that. It's a smart thing. And they're like, no, man. <laughs> hey, wait a minute. Just I move. eat that thing. What's he doing with that? What's exactly. he doing with that thing I eat? <laughs> exactly. And so, like, you can't, when you have a southern accent, you can't get away from it ever. Like, people will. They will assume things about you, and so that's the thing with with uh, Smarter Every Day. It started like that, and I was like, you know what? I can use that. Like, I, like people don't suspect anything, so I can, like, make things where I learn, and then that just kind of took off from there. That's yeah, great. What's, uh, what would you say is the, like, the thesis statement of your channel then? Like, what would people be getting into? And maybe, like, what are your, what are your three examples of videos you'd want them to watch if they were going oh, man. cold yeah. chicken? I mean, besides poop splash, we're talking about besides poop splash, right? We did an analysis of poop splash. Wait, that was one of the what's early poop splash. Poop splash. Oh, well, you know, like it's a yeah, physics you know thing, Steve. Uh, you uh, 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 yes, the, the, the Monroe they, effect. They call it the uh, the, ki the what is it called? P the Poseidon's kiss. kiss. Yeah. Poseidon's kiss. That's it. Yeah, Don't worry, Dustin. I got this. Look, the, the <laughs> anus is a control system, <laughs> and if it's it's just like math. Like it's this is where we need to go. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. It's, it's so we, I don't know, just stuff like that. I, I did a video about a backwards bicycle. Um, I The only criteria, are you guys at the point where you're like, screw the algorithm, I'm just going to make what I want to watch? We never understood at. the algorithm. Well, we don't never it. understood We're it. We're screw the knows. algorithm until the Patreon looks bad, and then all of a sudden the algorithm starts being real, <laughs> yeah. real important. The thing is, is everybody has an opinion about what how to best – you know game the algorithm yeah. and it's all different so it's like nobody knows it's still no. kind of boobs in the thumbnail right <laughs> i mean it, it's amazing how incredibly important the thumbnail game is i mean you're making a good point like at one point i just i was like i'm just gonna put a red circle in the thumbnail pointing to nothing and so i literally <laughs> put a red yeah. thumb like a circle and an arrow it's a stupid video that i was like i just want to upload this before the <laughs> solar eclipse and I don't know. I mean, nobody knows. Yeah, nobody dude, knows. that it's, arrow it's, it's thing though—it's so interesting because I I follow a lot of like nerdy stuff, and so my recommended is always like nerdy stuff. And so I I noticed a trend, and not so much anymore. But there was so many videos about like a new Star Wars movie or an Avengers movie, and it's like secrets you don't know and there's always like a circle and an arrow pointing to like some random screenshot from the movie and it's like what am i looking at and this is obviously a trick but i'm gonna click this Gets me every yeah. time. <laughs> what, 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 what are we yeah. looking at here Let's I be honest, I'm gonna click that. Yeah. why does it work every yeah. time i don't know what the deal do you guys uh do you sharpen the images on your thumbnails do you mm. do that sometimes yeah yeah, we are. We're in the like. We're just throwing everything at yeah. the we wall also, and seeing what works. We also stage. do the thing where it's like uh, you add a, a stroke around everybody. Like you cut everybody yeah. out, and then you add like the three pixel wide stroke. So it's like yeah. a, you know, a nice solid like outline around and, everybody. And we use grids a lot. We'll use we little use grids. Four part thing or people really? that's our people's thing face. that works yeah. like this yeah. like what yep. we're looking at really yep. brady bunch style and brady that bunch, seems yeah. to be the thing that like works the best for us right now that's so weird well, especially yeah. if it's like a lot of people that are like potentially recognizable got it yeah so you're screwed here because nobody's gonna recognize <laughs> maybe we've, yeah. we'll just put the hat up we there. were maybe hoping that's... you had the chicken so that I, we can yeah <laughs> i could have brought a chicken that would have been a really good idea we're just gonna put a chicken over your head on uh, the thumbnail <laughs> that do it why would you not do that no, that's we're not doing that. <laughs> dang it man that's clickable <laughs> so, hey can um, i ask i got a question can i bring it destin you you're a scienceman right 
I think that's how you say it. Yes, Great. John Scienceman. <laughs> I I had okay. best friends with Doctor Jerry Algorithm. <laughs> yeah, yes, exactly. <laughs> He's very confusing. Uh, and no one, Bill no one gets it. Equation. Uh, so <laughs> listen. So I got brought this. This was brought to my attention last night. My uh, girlfriend was listening to Tyler Oakley and Corey Cool's podcast, Psycho Babble. Do you know? Have you okay. heard? Of- what do you I, know who I, they are? I've, I've heard of it, but I haven't listened to it yet. Well, they're very funny, and it was an episode yeah, Tyler called Oakley, like yeah. Pork Teeth or Pork Skin or something. But Corey brought up a really good point that I want to throw to all of us here today. And I'm curious with your science background if you could explain it because I think it was kind of a mind blowing thing and it also kind of cracked me up. So I'm going to try to say it the way he said it, but it was something along the lines of for a second, all of you look around the room, look at different things. This is fun already. Right. All right. Okay. Isn't it strange? Should people at home be doing this too? Sure. Isn't it strange that just by looking at anything, you know what it would be like if you licked it? <laughs> <laughs> this just got weird. <laughs> Look around and tell me I'm wrong. Tell me you you're don't not, know you're what not wrong. every single thing would be like if you licked it. Is that because of, of learned you know, experience? You would know. I know just by looking at that. that <laughs> this little mouse that guard. That fencing mouse. Is that Every part of series? Yeah. Oh, I no. mean, <laughs> Want to feel yeah. old? This is Ratatouille now. Yeah. 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 You're, you're absolutely right. It's weird. It cracked me up. I was like, that's I, worth talking about. You know what's interesting? That's yep. not even in my room, but I know what that tastes like if I licked it. I, what that would be like. And not is that like, what it is? Is it because it's so closely associated with way too many senses? You're getting touch. You're getting taste. You're getting smell uh, really close together that maybe your brain just automatically is assuming. Or we've just licked everything in our existence. Okay. So, okay. So, know. so. <laughs> So you asked this question, and I don't know if this was just a primer or whatever, but it's nope. a really, really good point because the sense it's sensor fusion, right? So I just recently did I have a model here. Hold on. I recently flew in a jet and it was awesome, right? I what? flew in a Yeah, it was rad. I flew in a jet <laughs> with the Air Force oh. and um I got messed up in the head, literally. I actually have this on my shelf, wasn't planning this. So um, this is what? a thing. It's it's called a semicircular canal, and these are in your ears. I have two of them. Well, I we have all no- have two of them. Yeah, yeah Dustin. Dustin. don't so, try to pull uh, one over on us. We yeah. we know what we're talking. Yeah, about here. <laughs> I was only born with half of one. <laughs> <laughs> there are some advantages to that, actually. So so these things are in your ears, and um, th- there's fluid in them. And so, like, as your brain or as your head is rotating, it's kind of like a little gyroscope. And your body's like, oh, your head is rotating this way. That's your equilibrium center. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And so this is connected to your eyes, actually. And so if if you close your eyes and someone spins you in a chair, this will start telling your head one thing. And when you open your eyes, if your eyes, if your sense of sight and your sense of whatever that is... (sighs) Don't agree, then things go crazy. Mm. You die. That that's my Instantly. worst. You're dead. <laughs> that's my. It's my worst fear. Dying. Truly, but but you're kind of. I mean, we kind of joked into it a little bit there. But uh-huh. that sensor fusion thing. I you, I think you were serious there, Joe. It it matters. There's some place that senses cross. I don't know what that's like, but look in the little mouse. Yeah, over it's there. like I how they say that things. the uh, like if you take your taste is like seventy percent smell or something. And that's yeah. just, every time I hear that, I'm like, that's that's one of those, that's a yeah, cool that's fact. Yeah, that's why when you have a cold and your nose is all plugged up, that, like, you can't taste mm-hmm. food. It's like, yeah. Ugh, I'm just eating for well, sustenance. And that's how Destin also knows that when we need to get our kids to eat things that they don't want to eat, they plug their nose and they drink, it like, a big old thing of water with it so they don't have to taste it. <laughs> they ch- <laughs> right. they chase it, yeah. Oh. Pa- pound it. Wait, so Interesting. I, I, I'm, I'm curious about this whole thing, too, because I get so dizzy. Like, if I spin around once, I have to go away and sit down and recover. <laughs> like, like yeah. I get the, I am the dizziest person on the planet. I hate spinning. I never want to go in that carnival gravitron thing. So you just rode in a jet. Yeah, it was how, nuts, dude. When, how long ago did you do this? And tell us every detail. This, <laughs> this was about a year ago. And um, I flew with the Thunderbirds. It's actually the next video that I'm putting up. But... 
it was crazy. I mean, these guys are super smart people. Uh, the coolest person on the team, in my opinion, is this lady named Mace. She is, yeah. well, her yeah. name is M Michelle. But, Mace, but cool. Mace, Mace. <laughs> I mean, just think about it, yeah. So I flew with Flack, who was my pilot. His name Flack. Ma yeah, Ma just Major like Jason Top Gun. They it's got awesome. cool names. They got cool names, and they like wear their little hats and everything. And, oh, my goodness, the, the Thunderbirds, it's like someone sews their their uniform on them. They have to look like the per perfect specimen of a human, right? But anyway, um, it was amazing, and I was like, okay, this is what this is what I want to do. I want to go supersonic, oh. and I want to do this, 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 because I learned about all this stuff in school, and I want to know what it's like, like in the cockpit. And he's like, yeah, no problem. And then after that, we'll do an inverted uh, half Cuban, and then we'll spin up nine Gs, and we'll do all this stuff. Uh -uh. I got through about three quarters of it, and then I tapped out. And so, I, I regret that to this. I, I wake up at night and I'm like, I could have done a 9G maneuver in an F-16 and I tapped out. It's yeah. so and, funny that you said that because Steve uh, is also one half of an inverted half Cuban. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it says that in my Twitter bio. Yeah. <laughs> what, what was it like, though? Were you like, this cannot, this has to stop now? Because my yeah. body, this is, must be a feeling your body is just not meant to. Well, people it's, black out and like when they when they're going. Yeah, I would black so. out. I think. Yeah. So yeah. so we went. We pulled a seven point two G maneuver, and he was like working up to it. These people like they have a G tolerance. They're used to pulling yeah. like high G. So the they F sixteen. They do the spin thingy. Yeah, they can do anything. Yeah. The F sixteen is limited by the person in the seat. Like it can do more than humans can do, and if if they pull on the stick hard enough, they'll just they'll just black out. The pilot will. That's so, so they have to. Con <laughs> Yeah, it's messed up. They have to constantly, like, they know what they're doing. And so um, when we were in well, there, he, he started with, like, a 5G maneuver, which is crazy hard. And then, because think about it, if your head weighs 10 pounds, Steve, in your case, like, 20 pounds, and you pull, like, <laughs> 7 Gs. Because of my big brain oh, and my half yeah, ear That's canal. it. <laughs> <laughs> you pull 10 Gs, for example, which people don't do, your head literally weighs 10 times as much as what it normally does. And so oh, your God. neck has to... And so what's funny is we had a GoPro on him and a GoPro on me, and he's up there like Joe Fighter Pilot. He's like, all right, we're going to turn around, do, you know, and I'm in the back, and I look like a turtle, like, <laughs> you know, my head is squished. I was like, oh, I can't make it. <laughs> you, your vision collapses in. To, it look, feels like you're looking through, a, like, literally blackout. Like the That's because the blood the vessels constrict, right? Like, everything... Yeah, we're going to go with that. That sounds <laughs> great. But it, it does have something to do with the blood. Like, the blood is being rushed out of your head. And because of the uh, the uh, the terror. <laughs> There's that. I don't terror know if gravity. It's like, yeah. <laughs> I don't know if it's a brain thing or blood in the eyes. I don't know why that happens, oh. but it happens. And, and so we did 7.2 Gs, and I was like, I can't think anymore. I can no, My brain no longer works, and this is my limit. And so I found the limit, and I was like, if he does more, I black out. Do I want to do that? I don't think I do. It, it, it seems like, you know, nine Gs and your head flop over. It seems like that'd be bad. <sighs> yeah. Ooh. So I tapped out. And Kunk. I don't know. What would you do? What would you do if you had the chance of a lifetime? Like Elliot. So chance of a lifetime. I'm glad you asked Elliot because mine is the most boring answer. <laughs> Steve, <laughs> I wouldn't. Steve is, would treat I the wouldn't. experience the exact way he's treating his life right now. It could be just... <laughs> Um, would you do it? I you would know. do it. I would do exactly what you did, I think. I think I would get to a point where I would Damn. be like, that's enough. I'll, I'm good. I get it. But I also thought about going to see the blue algae water. That Have you seen oh, the pictures yes. of this? Crazy. Yeah. Bioluminescent or whatever. Mm -hmm. yeah, is it still happening that? right now? It's, I, it's, it's ending. It's about to end, yeah. And I was going to do it. When did you come was... here, Elliot, to L.A.? What? When did you come to L.A. from Florida? Uh, 20... Oh God! Oh, like twenty ten? Twenty? Oh God! Twenty ten? Maybe? <laughs> yeah, twenty. That's twenty? Really oh God! Ago. <laughs> 20, is oh, that AD? <laughs> <laughs> it's like yeah, two thousand ten, maybe. Because I because I saw that when I was like in high school. Well, like, I've never a... seen it. Yeah, it, but I thought about going, and then I was like, I bet the fun of experiencing it firsthand <laughs> is a little bit more fun than seeing like a cool video of it and of so i was like yeah. i'm just yeah. not gonna i was like the distance between not knowing it exists and seeing it on a video is cool but i don't need to go see it in person so the worst case scenario i'm just too lazy to actually go for the <laughs> fighter jet 
But I think you did the right thing. I don't think you need to push yourself. You're already in a fighter jet. But, like, if I came to you, Elliot, and I was like, look, I got an opportunity to be the passenger in a jet and make a video for something, and I'm not going to do it. So do you want to do it? And if it was all yeah. set up and travel well, and everything is accommodated, would you do it? Yeah. If like Yeah. Yeah, you, you have to. It's well, something not me, man. I, I got invited to one of those zero-G Oh my God! Things you didn't, you didn't do it. No, I passed it to Sam Basher. I was like, what "This is something Sam would do? like." I've done that. It's amazing. Oh. Nah, it's not. Funny. I did that at a space camp. They took us up in a plane and then you cut went the plane to space off. camp. I went to space <laughs> camp and space academy, Destin, uh, in Huntsville, Alabama. Huntsville, Alabama. Yeah, and That's I got where really I'm homesick. Right now. What's that? I was the kid. I was the kid that always wanted to go to space camp, but we like we couldn't do it. Like I didn't go to space yeah. camp, but all like I heard about it, and it's like. There's a space camp. Yeah, it <laughs> so was you're that kid. Pretty cool. Space camp always sounded cool to me. And then even at the age when it was like, because you know we're kids of the '80s, I th and I think you are too, Destin, right? Like, you're yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah. So I remember seeing the commercials for space camp and going like, "Whoa, cool!" And then you see the kids on the like gyroscope thing, and I'm like, "I'm out. <laughs> I'm yeah. not doing that. That's not for me." <laughs> My brother actually works over there now. Yeah, it, really? occasionally. Well, like they're down right now for the pandemic stuff, but he takes pictures for them and stuff. Oh, good. Yeah, it's great. Uh, I'm yeah. a big fan. It also taught me everything I need to know about how my childhood was because you can't complain about much if you were the kind of kid who got to go to space <laughs> camp to to twice. Space camp. <laughs> Oh, you went twice? twice. Oh, went, my God. Well, that's what Space right. Academy is, Joe. Space Academy is where the adults go. <laughs> Wait, you graduated. So, you got yeah. to go to step two. Wait, we're skipping over something really important here. What the heck? What did it feel like to do the zero G thing? I really know. Cool. That's what I want to know, too. I, it oh, was yeah. the happiest uh, thing. Oh, are you talking to me oh. or are you talking to Dad? No, no, no. Wait, did you, you do zero you G? Just, I did, but he went to space camp. Let's talk to him. <laughs> Hey, Destin, thanks for being on the show. So anyway, Elliot, what, yeah, listen, what did you do? I had a Skittle. I, I want to know. Yeah, no, I had Skittles in my hand, and I, I didn't know they were going to do it, and he made a joke, and he was like, I'm going to turn the plane off, and you guys are going to feel what it's like to be weightless. And we were like, ha-ha, very funny, you can't do that. And then he did it, and then I had a Skittle that I was holding, and I remember letting it go and it floating in front of my face for a while. And that oh. was, was like the coolest thing that ever. And the yeah. feel, like the feel, that cool, fun, like, like thing when so, your stomach goes into your throat. So, so nice. the way I got to do it is in, in college, we, we did this experiment that we had to test in zero G. It had to do with torquing a bolt. It's not important. But what was important is that we got to do like 10 extra parabolas and we got to oh. float. And I got the hang of zero G. Cool. And I was like, I feel like I can use this 20 seconds of this parabola to do cool stuff. And then in the end, like I had, I had been really nice to people and like I had made friends with some of the people. And he said, hey, we might let one of you guys ride in the jump seat on the landing. Are you interested? I was like, yes. And he goes, okay, you and this other person, we're going to go do, like, guess the number one through ten, and whoever gets the closest to the number gets to do it. He's like, guess seven. <laughs> well, the person, <laughs> we, like, said, we said, okay, you ready? Number one through ten, and he points to the other person first, and they said, one through ten, uh, two. And I was like, what? Was like, you, you say five. That's yeah, what no you, one I was goes like, one through three. ten, and the answer is one. Three. Yeah, so like, I'm going to just take three and all the rest of the numbers. And he's like, okay, you're in the jump seat. It, the, the answer was probably two. He's just like, yeah, you, you're you in the jump seat. We're not letting that person. That what is yeah. the jump seat? What's the jump seat? It's this, uh, it's this seat right behind the pilot that they fold down. And you get to like see the, the final approach and landing oh, of this big. So cool. Oh, it's so cool. Yeah, it was a. It was a KC-135 when I was doing it. But it was just amazing. It was really what, neat, uh, so. What's the coolest thing you've experienced in as a result of like Smarter Every Day and what you do? Would that be... Is it that? No, that that was in college. I did... I, um, oh, or I think in general. In, yeah. Interviewing Obama was amazing. Interviewing Obama was just an incredible experience. I got to do a face-to-face -face interview with President Obama. Um, it was in 2016. Was that so, part of the like um, like a couple YouTubers got to do? I think Hank Green did one. Yeah, you did Hank, one. Yeah, Hank did it the year before me. With me, it was Ingrid Nilsson and Swoozy, cool. and nice. me. And, yeah, we we got to interview Obama. And what was interesting is this was a really weird period of time. This was like right when it was Clinton Trump, and they had just figured that out. And I remember having some conversations with the president off screen or off camera, and he's like, "Yeah, this is a really important thing." because whoever gets my job gets the nuclear codes, and that's important. And you could kind of see in his face, he was like concerned, 
but you could also and it was it was a very apolitical moment you mm-hmm. know because you could tell that it, apolitical with a nudge <laughs> like <laughs> I, yeah well i don't know because it was like it felt like a moment like a dad who had been defending his daughters yeah you know and he's like walking him down the aisle and he's like okay please get this right and because I, I didn't think that there was any like biased in the discussion he was just like this is an important thing and i don't think that it's going well you know, because yeah. I don't think I'm so, I don't think he. Yeah, you're a good uh, you're a good fit for that interview job because I would have been like, can you give me one nuclear code? <laughs> just one, just, one, just one, just one. Yeah, I can't do any harm with it. I just like it'll be a cool piece of trivia to have. I just want to put it on my Tinder profile. Like, yeah, yeah. Right. <laughs> I'll really codes. <laughs> yeah. What was interesting about that is when you get when you live in Alabama and you go to your friends and you're like, you know, at work and you're sitting around the cooler and you're like, hey, Bill. I'm going to go interview the president. What do you think I should say? Bill's like, you know what I would tell him? You know, I was like, well, well okay, I'll listen. And, and Bill would tell you a lot of stuff. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like, go take my guns or whatever, which I have guns. But, he, you know, he's like, you know, you, you, I would tell him this or this. And then, you know, you get people on the other side of the equation and stuff. And you're like, I don't think you understand the exercise. This is literally going to happen. Like, it is, I'm really going yeah. to have this conversation. Yeah. <laughs> And, and, this isn't and a so, hypothetical. This yeah. is real. So, so what I did is I went and I read all of his books and like anything he'd ever. Your friends. That I could, <laughs> no, <laughs> they're all yes. in notebook paper. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, they're all about snakes. It's called, Here's and what stuff. I'd tell them. Those yeah. are manifestos. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, Joey, this one falls apart That's in the third excellent. act. Yeah. <laughs> like literally, just falls right out. <laughs> it was it was a really interesting experience. So like. What I by by reading Obama's books, when I got to the the interview, you could tell like he had been briefed, and it was like, man, this is we don't really know about this guy. He's the wild card. But I asked him like a softball question to start just to see where we were at, and you could tell he was really defensive. Yeah. But the moment I was like, you know, I figured you would answer that because in your book you talked about this, and he was like, oh wow, this this dude read my books, and so at that point it became like a back and forth. Like we were helping each other. You That's know? cool. Wow. Were you getting? Do you feel like you were getting, um, for lack of a better word, you were getting profiled as like the white Southern guy, like in that moment, a little possibly. bit? Possibly. Yeah, yeah. Possibly. Like, um, I I will say that's possible. Yeah. I, well, and I think you're, you're yeah. his book is reading his book is like showing him a sign of respect and curiosity yeah. about him. And I feel like a lot of times, especially in politics, like people just don't care. So I imagine mm-hmm. that he probably was like, oh, you're like a human who's like You took to... three extra steps. It's yeah. incredibly professional. Right. And seamless transition to an ad read. Hi, everybody. Um, this is an ad read for the Valley cast. My name is Elliot Morgan. I definitely didn't forget uh, to record this yesterday and definitely haven't inconvenienced Ryan, who I love very much and appreciate. So anyway, let's get down to business, guys. It's important right now that we try to avoid crowds as much as possible. But what happens if you need to mail something? What happens if you need some postage. Well, I'm here to tell you about a little thing called you know, stamps.com. That's right, stamps.com. Well, anything you can do at the post office, guys, you can do at stamps.com. Print postage on demand and skip those lines and crowds at the office. Plus, you can actually save some money with discounts that you can't even get at the post office at stamps.com. It brings all the services of the U.S. Postal Service right to your computer in the safety and comfort of your own home office or anywhere else. You are hunkering down right now, my fellow hunkered downers. That's a uh, Leslie Jordan reference, who I highly recommend following on Instagram. He's uh, He brings a lot of joy to my life. Anyway, <clears throat> you know what else brings joy? You guessed it. <clears throat> Narcissists, <clears throat> whether you're a small business sending invoices and online seller shipping out products or you just or you're just working from home, you know, and you need to mail stuff. Like why not just start mailing people? You know, I miss I've been thinking about doing uh, letters to my family for miss because I miss them. I don't know if I will, but if I do, I will use stamps.com uh, because I can simply use my computer to print out official U.S. postage 24-7 for any letter, any package, any class of mail anywhere I want to send it, which is pretty cool. It'll probably be to Florida. Once your mail is ready, just leave it for your mail carrier. Boom. Little thumbs up. Good to see him. And like I said, with stamps, stamps.com, you get great discounts too. Five cents off of every first class stamp and up to 40% off USPS shipping rates. And now, in addition to offering discounted US Postal Service rates, stamps.com also offers UPS services with discounts of up to 62%. Plus, with stamps.com, you won't even have to pay UPS residential surcharges. 
I know if there's one thing I hate is residential surcharges, and I uh, don't have made now. Right now, my uh, right now, the Valley Cast listeners, thank you very much for tolerating this ad read. Um, but while we're here, just so you know, um, you're gonna get a special offer, and it's a four week trial plus free postage and a scale, a digital scale, without any long term commitment because you gotta make sure you gotta fly by the seat of your pants, you know what I'm saying? Just go to stamps.com, click on the microphone at the top of the homepage and type in valleycast, that's stamps.com, microphone at the top of the page and type in valleycast. Stay safe, everybody, and thank you. Now, get back to Destin, who is wonderful. So I was asked later, like, you know, a year and a half later, if I wanted to interview Ivanka. And I was like, yes, I do. And so it, it, it puts you in a really unique position where you can touch both sides of the aisle. Oh, it's yeah. great. It's beautiful. You know, it's 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 interesting. So I did the same thing. I read her books and I did it with an open mind. I'm I'm wow. very I'm like I'm very like right down the middle like, you know, I vote for both parties just depending on the election and whatever. And so I read her books and I read it planning on like you know, being like, "Oh, I read her books. This worked on Obama. This is going to work on her. You know, I'll be able to ask good questions." And then when I started, it was about uh, empowering women, mm-hmm. and it was about it's called "Women Who Work." I think is the name of the book. And I read it expecting to use it as ammunition in an interview, and actually, it changed some things about what I thought about. There was a line in there like um, it said, "She said I have known far too many women who have stayed in a job longer than they should because they were comfortable," and that that li- just that line just like. Ooh, just hit yeah. me like a ton of bricks, mm-hmm. and it and it made me make some changes in life. That's and great. So, and man. I told her that. And so my opening line was her, was like, "Hey, nice to meet you. Going to level with you. I read your books to try to make this interview easy, but it actually changed my mind on these topics, and I appreciate wow. that." Oh, and she was, great. yeah, it was great. So I mean, it that is, would be my. It's important to 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 read about both sides it really is it's if you're trying to be educated and you're trying to have the best possible (laughs) viewpoints of everything it it is important to to just see what's going on in all sides can i ask you a follow-up to that destin because i will admit for the three of us and i'm sure some of us a little bit more (laughs) guilty uh i have preconceived notions about the lady and the family we Um, all do about everybody. What, what did you walk away from those interviews uh, being most surprised and impressed by? Yeah, how incredibly real and professional she was. Um, the the thing we were asked, the thing I was asked to go to was in Detroit, and it was a thing where she was promoting a coding initiative in inner city uh, schools and also amongst young females, and it was a a large grant from the government to like initiate these things and if i recall correctly my facts facts may be wrong about this they had asked several people to go like promote this and talk about it like the question is will you promote this money going to inner city de- you know developmental type programs to teach these people how to code these young young people that don't really have access to these sorts of things i was like yes that is an objectively good thing i will do that and they're like, we can't find anybody to come talk about this. I was like, well, I want to. I don't care who. I, that's just an object, objectively good. Yeah. And I think there's some people yep. that do that. Like Bono does that. Like he doesn't care. He's like, whatever. I just want money for whatever it is Bono raises money for. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah, yeah. And so, but I was struck by how real and personable she was. And like afterwards, she sent me a follow up email, a thank wow. you email. And that's I looked great. at it and I was like. If she had an assistant write this, they did really, really good. But that feels like a human email. So I, who knows? I bet it was. But, yeah. I mean, that's probably, yeah, I would take it at face value. I mean, again, it's very that's... respectful and professional to really super do research on a high profile interview person, you know? And I think that's like, it's it's not expected in any way. And once you do that, you kind of do open up a line of respect and professionalism from that person you know because it's like that's a lot of work to read books like several books it's also yeah like you're not a span of time you're not in your lifetime (laughs) that's just a huge amount of books that's more that's unfathomable (laughs) it takes a lot of work to read book (laughs) 
I mean, and, and by read, you know, we could also be talking about uh, listening to it at 2x on Audible or something well, like it's that. The Not same that you thing. would do that. It's the well, same that's, thing. That's, that's yeah. the question. That's the question. Yeah. Thank you, Justin. Let's, let's, you know what? You know, in fact, he's got to weigh in. Thank Justin's you. No, yeah, yeah. In. It's time for <laughs> him to weigh in for sure. Weigh in, yeah. Justin. Is, okay. Okay. is listening to an audio book reading? Oh wow, that's hard. Okay, man, that's a dang good question. Okay, so here's <laughs> here's the deal. It depends on obviously the definition of the word read, which we will now Google because this is going to be a definitive answer. Uh, define read. I just googled that because <laughs> I'm an adult. Look at and comprehend the meaning of written or printed matter by mentally interpreting the characters or symbols <gasps> of which it is composed. Oh, Ooh. hold on, Destin. Uh, so that I would say. Auto, go ahead. Destin, I just found what? a video. It's called. It's all about misinformation on Google. It's this whole series <laughs> that this guy does on Smarter Every Day. So what's, I would be careful. <laughs> oh, okay. Got it. Got it. I was just defining. That's a great point. That's a great point. So um, I I use the word reading. I use the word reading when I uh, when I, I'm like, hey, have you read this? I've read this. It's I think great. We you should all read this. Do. And but so, we got into a big argument about it. We got into who a big, won. I well, mean, so I, here, think, I, I think I like to sound smart, so well, I say well, reading. Say, if I just before look at you the give title. me the answer, this is how this works. Who's going to pay me the most to side with them to, to <laughs> cast the casting vote? Ivanka. That's how this works. Ivanka will definitely pay you the most. <laughs> well, what's your Venmo? So, <laughs> yeah, that sounds great. <laughs> I mean, you know, we. I think we can't. I think the the conclusion we came to was, you can say you read it if you only listen to it, but. You know, but well, it, what, there is a difference between <laughs> reading something and listening to something. I think we it, were just playing with the semantics of the word at the end of the day. And what was fun about it is that we did what like I was basing my argument, which is it's not reading off exactly what you just did. The, the straight up definition of the yeah. word reading. But what we found out through this argument that we had was a lot of people take this question very seriously yes. to the point of a lot of people were offended that we would even for a second think that it is not reading because there's a lot of people that cannot read. Wait, oh, what you, right, what you, blind, like blind people or... Or people yeah. or dyslexic people that have right. a lot of trouble taking oh. in information. Oh, Oh wow! So they tried to make you feel like you were sliding something <laughs> yeah. by yeah. your answer. Yeah, yeah. How, I just want to make twenty twenty. I just <laughs> want to make myself sound smart. I don't want to make <laughs> my friends feel bad. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Can we just be for things and not against things yeah. so strongly? Yeah. Oh man. Anyway. Yeah, but why can you know what it's gonna be like if you lick it? <laughs> Th that's an excellent. That's an excellent point. Yeah. Um, I think it's a. It's multiple things. I think it's temperature. Um, yeah, I was thinking about that. So. Have you, you know if you like touch a piece of metal, like you can feel the heat coming mm -hmm. out of your hand? Really, I feel like licking stuff is the same way. Uh, that this confused me um, uh, because it was it was warmer <laughs> than I expected. You know? Yeah. <laughs> but I but, have a feeling of what. But that, I knew what it tasted like before it. Yeah. Like I know what that would feel like on my tongue. Like just seeing that, not physically being in the same I, room I, with it. I, I guess people that are listening to the podcast don't know what I'm holding up. Oh, it, that's it's, true. It, yeah. <laughs> it's it's a mouse. It's a it's a taxidermized mouse. Whatever that word is, and he's got a little sword. So yeah, it's, he uh, was it's, taxidermized, but also knighted. <laughs> taxidermized, but not pretty forgotten. Much. <laughs> pretty, pretty much. TIP. Yeah. What's the story uh, yeah. behind that little boy? Yeah. So there's this uh, this book called Chronicles of Narnia. Yes, there uh, is. Yeah, yeah, and and there's a a little character in Chronicles of Narnia called Reepa Cheep, and he's a little mouse, and the mouse. Um, fights for what's true and right Aww. even if he knows he's going to die like he, he will take on a lion with his little bitty sword Aww. and uh, i like that a lot oh, and so I, I love it yeah i, I kind of like reap it cheap it's kind of a thing that I like. that's yeah. great it's very ironic because the mouse that you use to tax or dime taxidermize into that character was actually a serial killer mouse that was responsible for so much death and destruction. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. So yeah. Yeah, I think it all levels out. Uh, <laughs> Destin, are you currently in quarantine consuming any fun content right now? It, that's in that kind of world in your like entertainment or science world. I'm actually creating a lot of content. Like uh, we're, so we have a slow-mo camera here and I've, I've been setting up some stuff that I'm going to be doing with that camera, and um, I have this like yard tool series I'm working on, 
But I, I, I just spend a lot of time making stuff right now. Cool. I have found myself to be very, very busy. You, you guys too. I see you putting out content all the time, right? So like, there's this balance between making content and consuming content, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So you're making yeah. the content during the day and then uh, watching it at night. <laughs> that's pretty much, yeah, yeah. that's the but deal. But while balancing a family and everything else. The garden is what I'm doing. Is that the thing? I'm, okay. I'm growing cornses, I call them. And so um, I've got tomatoes, peppers, and my cornses. And I'm try- have you ever tried to grow a garden? No. No, but my dad's got a green thumb. We In my childhood home that they're currently still living in, in Oxnard, there's an avocado tree, a lemon tree, a guava tree, a fig tree, and an orange tree. And That's a tree cool. tree where the yeah. trees are birthed. <laughs> and there's an apple tree, but you're not allowed to touch that one. No. Else you get yeah. cast out. No. <laughs> do you eat do you eat all the fruit yeah we will just walk through the backyard and be like oh that fig looks done and then and then take a bite out of it and go oh that wasn't a fig that was a bird and then you, <laughs> and then you move on to the figs and then you're like oh that's really good yeah this <laughs> area like- is like the uh I, I grew up in montana and it wasn't around you know fruit bearing trees aren't really the thing there's some tree or some cherry tree orchards that are up on this lake and it's like they're not supposed to be there but the weather and the temperature and the climate makes it perfect so when i moved to here it was kind of like a it was like a food culture shock all of these yards have fruit bearing trees and it's to the point destin where i don't want to i'll use the word nuisance for some of them like they have so much that they're just putting them in brown paper bags and they put them out front in their yard that are like take this fruit we it's really? too much and we can't use it. <laughs> what, what's what's so what's it like in L.A. right now? Like you're all there. Yeah. Yes. Like in, 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 like you're in L.A. proper. Like the like what what is it like being there during quarantine? Is it? I mean, are you guys getting hit hard? It's, I mean, is it is it difficult? It's what strange. It like? It's strange and it's surreal and it's it's. Seems... And you've had this conversation fifty times. I bet. I mean, uh, did I... sort of, but but it's Maybe. like. Maybe. Not with other Angelinos, really, because we're, we all just kind of figure that we're all in the same mess and it's all very relatable. And it's like, you know, you got to talk about it, right? Because we're all in the middle of it. And it's such a strange thing we're all dealing with as a as a whole planet together, which is very interesting. But you, in you LA, gotta come visit Alabama. I'm sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> Wait, what's that? We got to come to Alabama. Alabama is awesome right now. I mean, granted, you know, we, we have really weird government decisions and you know they're opening up before they should all this weird stuff is happening but like there's some being spread out is kind of nice right now that's like montana i bet your yep. folks are like that up there but a little so, bit i'm but sorry it's not I really cut- hit up there too much there's a little bit of shutdown um but it's also uh i don't feel like they're on lockdown they're shut down but they're, it's not as locked down but that's also a cultural thing up there a lot of people are like not me <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's just difficult to to see our mayor say, "Well, I guess we're gonna stay in until July," and uh, and and then and then see so many people not really caring and still going about their business. And I'm sure that's frustrating everywhere. But in LA, it's like, and New York is worse, obviously. But in LA, it's like we're just so close to each other. There's no space here, so it's like. How are we supposed to avoid this thing? We just have to stay home. It's the only we've had, choice. We've had our times of, um, to get a little bit more descriptive with it, like it's felt apocalyptic at times. It really like has. when it first, when the, fu- sh- the shutdown first happened, people did listen for the most part. The freeways were, nobody was on them. If you would go out at night, there's some people that would go and take pictures of like downtown and all these places that used to be frequented now, and now they're eerily not. We also had for like the first three weeks, um, like a gray haze and rain. So that added to like the dreariness. Oh, yeah. yeah. And yeah. Uh, so there, but it was also nice where with, if it, you needed to get somewhere, you could get there so fast. And, <laughs> and not uh, only that, if you could get to a high ground, mm-hmm. the, 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 the like horizon is gorgeous. <gasps> yes. That's, <laughs> you know? that's the biggest thing, Destin. Uh, the and the high ground is, you can, with your, you can, you know, if other people yeah. have the high ground, yeah, you can defend <laughs> the, the pollution thing that they're talking about everywhere and how it, like the, the earth is getting a chance to breathe kind of and exhale. Yeah. Um, it definitely hit LA. I've, I've can see downtown like a crisp photograph from far away. And that's never been the case. Dude, I, I didn't even here. tell awesome. you guys, but I was, I, the other day I got to escape my home for a few minutes and I've, I think out of all of us, I've been the most 
reclusive. Not that it's a contest or anything, but I don't leave very often at all. If it's a contest, I lose. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, I re-quarantined to Palm Springs. That's what it is. It's (laughs) re-quarantined. But see, you are still being safe, though. Like, you know, it's not irresponsible. And it's not irresponsible to leave. It's just, you know, be smart or whatever. So anyway, I'm in the San Fernando Valley. And so Ventura Boulevard is this main, like, big stretch that, that goes, I mean, where, where, how, did, how would you describe that? It goes from, like, the San One Fernando. end to the other. It goes from, oh, sure, yeah. okay, whatever. It goes from one end <laughs> to the other. But it's a very long stretch of, of, yeah. of a main road. And Cheryl and Crow built it. Cheryl Crow. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Cheryl Crow did build it, and no, by no, herself. she did Santa Monica. Sorry, this is Tom Petty's road. Um, yeah. <laughs> no, it was it was Randy Newman. He lo- that's why he loves L.A. But but no, I was on Ventura Boulevard, and I I've driven Are you up about and the down governor the who was a wrestler for a while. Oh, uh, I think that was Minnesota. Jesse Ventura. That's Jesse Ventura. Jesse Ventura. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Anyway, so I I drive up and down Ventura Boulevard all the time, and so the other day I was out doing some errands and. I could see almost to like Universal Studios, like you know, because because if you take Ventura Boulevard, you could just keep going and going and going until you hit like Cent- Universal City and stuff like that. But I could see so clearly and so it was like I've never seen such a lack of pollution in the area, and that it's a really nice thing and it looks wonderful. But the the reason why it's happening is not nice. Yeah, so, <laughs> so that's the trick. How do we keep the good stuff? The good stuff of all this. How do we keep I that? I don't think we can, man. I think there's just too many people. Well, this is the question I brought up to you guys before, and it was like thought experiment, right? Clearly, there's some good happening out of this whole thing for the planet, kind of, and it can be debatable um, how good it is. But is there a world, if planned out properly, where the earth and the people could take a pre-planned out month break yearly and i know the answer is no but what if i love that what if there was because we also know that if this isn't a a moment of complete stress and fear and terror and it's something we plan for this is also a reset for the the brain and the emotions on a human level and could force you to get out of routine and try new things and i don't know the answer is probably absolutely no. yeah i mean like like it's good to, to like take a break like intermittent fasting works right and so i think we have turned so inward to our little black mirrors you know in our little you know how many likes can i get we turn inward on that and i think because we've physically been forced inwards i think it's taught us to crave mm-hmm. you know the other people like the connections with it. Like I have a nephew I haven't touched. I haven't met him. He's three months old. I've never met him, and I I like want to go hold this baby more than anything. Mm-hmm. And so, it's a really interesting thing because it it makes us want these things, yeah. want other people, even though we're forced away. And so I think I think it's it's a good thing to to want that connection with other people this way. I don't know. That's very nice. I think yeah, so I too. I mean, it, it's certainly an interesting you know, forced experiment, I guess you could call it. <laughs> but I would love it if people could just decide, because I love that they are that they are deciding that, like, maybe businesses can be run from home in some ways and not everybody needs to be I, in the office all the time. I'm going to build something. I've decided that I'm going to build something in America because I'm looking around and, like, everything's built other places and we can't get masks fast enough or whatever. That's a whole other thing. But it's like... Why can't we build things in America? And so I've decided, and I'm going to do it. I'm just going to go pick a product, and I'm going to. I was looking. I was looking at like a ruler on the desk last night, and it said Hecho in China. I was like, Why can't I do this? I have a degree, a engineering degree that teaches me how to make this. I'm going to freaking make it. And so, anyway, that's you, a whole uh, other thing. Do you watch measure Shark every Tank? day. <laughs> yeah. Do you watch Shark Tank or Shark Tank, Dustin? Uh, I have. Yeah. Yeah. I have. Yeah. It's Ooh, yeah, you'd be th- good on that. It's like one of my there, addictions. There's, and it, there's I, one in. I've got some secret things I'm working on, like with other people, because I want to like help small businesses and build things. But there's this, uh, there's a, a, a version of that in Canada called Dragon's Den. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah and and there's a, a good friend. Uh, his name is Bradley Friesen. He's a really cool dude. He's he's up in Vancouver, but he he did that up there. He he made this product and all that, and he was telling me about the experience. But I just want to make something in a small town 
and it doesn't have to make anybody a million dollars. It just has to keep the lights on to the building that it's being made in. That's all it has to do. I love that. Yeah. I love that, too, um, because we're certainly seeing the result of borders shutting down and then not receiving things that we take for granted every single day because borders are open and we get deliveries from those different places. And, and, and our trade right. relationships are good. <laughs> right, 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 right. But it is interesting because manufacturing, just, you know, kind of simple things that everybody has and everybody, you know, either loses or breaks and wants another one. And having that production line here is such an important thing that is such a weird oversight in so many ways yeah speaking of weird oversight and half of the reason i wanted to talk to you today you kind of just did this what you're talking about on a on a smaller scale but can you talk a little bit about the the mask production project you just did yeah we we built a um so when everything hit the hospitals here in huntsville alabama near space camp they all did yeah that's, yeah <laughs> they, Thumbs up. they did they did not have ppe but they had placed ppe three months earlier and they had contracts, and they had paid money and everything. And as soon as everything hit, um, as things were being shipped in from out of country, they were diverted um, to New York City. Like, like forcefully, like, nope, Alabama doesn't get this. New York City gets this, which makes total sense because that's where we were getting hit hard as a nation. But also, it means, whoa, wait wait a second. That what are we going to do? <laughs> we, we had <laughs> contracts, and we had, so, like, how do we get masks on our face? And so I looked around. I was building ventilators in the kitchen kind of things with a couple of my buddies, Jeremy and a guy named Chad. We were building ventilators. And it quickly became apparent that we just needed basic PPE. So we started working on these face shields. A guy in the Czech Republic named Prusa, Joseph Prusa, he came up with this design people could 3D print. So we developed the, – the cool thing about Huntsville is it's a bunch of nerds, and they all do things. So – and if you can give everybody a clear direction, they will all do it immediately. And like we work together very well here. And so I just put out a little private video, an unlisted video, you know how the game works, <laughs> on Reddit. I was like, hey, here's the deal. It's not a deal now, but in two weeks, we're gonna need face shields. So if you have a 3D printer and you convinced your husband or your wife that you needed a 3D printer, now is the time <laughs> to demonstrate the time that. Now to really utilize it. <laughs> exactly. Demonstrate it now. And so all over Huntsville, like 600 people cranked up their 3D printers, and we made like 3,000 face shields in the span of like four or five days. Whoa, that's holy crap, man. That's amazing. That was a lot. As that was happening, I was off down at this small um, mom and pop shop down in a little town called Vinemont, Alabama, and I was doing the engineering stuff with this guy named Chris. He owns an injection molding. You know, he can make a mold. You know what an injection mold is? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so he can make a mold, and he can actually run the mold. So I was, like, negotiating for how much it costs to do this, and the big companies couldn't do it, but they were all putting out these press releases about all the stuff they were doing but chris was just like let's get her done man he stayed up all night he designed the mold chris. in one day it's you amazing old chris him. man yeah it's awesome and um That's so chris yeah and he just <laughs> knocked it out and so like in seven days we had a mold which is a very short timeline and we started cranking out these face shield frames and i, I did plan this i put one back here oh heck yeah show Ooh, you let's see yeah so this is, it, it looks simple, but this is an injection molded part. And you put this on your head and you put just a little transparency mm -hmm. on the top, on the front of it. And it's, it's a simple, it's, it's like brain dead simple. It's like but, a DIY um, welder's <laughs> mask is what it kind of looks like. Yeah, exactly. And so this, this frame that goes on the top of your head, like mm -hmm. kind of like a hat bill, you know, that's where you mount this, this transparency. Again, this was designed by Prusa in uh, the Czech Republic. So we modified it for injection molding. Chris knocked it out. Uh, the, the guy that made the mold for him at the shop there, his name was Jeremy. And we turned out, so we started in Huntsville, and we were one of, you know, we actually learned about how to sanitize the 3D printed versions from this guy in California, actually. His name is uh, Pooch. He's, in, he's got this thing called Operation Shields Up. And so he taught us how to do it. We followed his model. He gave us everything free. He was like, hey, this is what we did. You can do it better. Go. Wow, I love that. People that was coming awesome. together from all so, over the world. It was awesome. So in the end, we ended up quickly providing for Huntsville, oh, and so we, cool. we provided over forty thousand to the whole state. So wow. we we just 
we just kicked it up. Did but you think you were going to be able to do that? That I mean, and that quickly and efficiently, or were you just like, I'm going to take this one step at a time and see what I can do, and then the next thing you realized, it was like huge. So, so we had a team of all these people, and there was a core group of. I'd say about a dozen people that were just every day, they would wake up, they didn't have a job at the time because of, you know, some Mm -hmm. of them have gone back since then, but they didn't have a job at the time and they volunteered like all day long. Jennifer is a a lady that her and I were like attached at the hip, making it all happen, you know, on the the administration side. But it was, no, is the answer to the question. We we, We looked at some people that were doing it like in Charlotte, North Carolina, for example, they said, "Yeah, we we've got thirty thousand that we've distributed to the local city." I was like, thirty thousand? How is that even possible? How is that possible? That's such and a large like, number. Mm-hmm. It's crazy." And so, but Chris, the the advantage of of injection molding is you can make a part every thirty seconds. Wow. A three D printer is like you know hours. And you so, have a bunch of people hopefully churning them out on their yeah. own printers. And so we we basically provided enough for Alabama, and then we made it available for everybody. And we we're like, "Hey, if you want one." Because eventually, what we found out is we were just we were just doing this on donations, and the demand outpaced the donations. And so, at some point, you're like, "We need capitalism to happen because I can't pay this much money." Yeah, yeah. And so, we just turned the mold over to a local company. It's called Lab Two Eighteen, and we're like, "Hey, you've got the mold, and Chris can actually sell these." So, yeah, Ropes and Co. in Vinemont, Alabama. If you want these, he can sell them to you for like nothing if your city needs them. So, so. The, with those types of masks, the shield masks, th- those are for like they're most useful for for medical professionals, right? Like that, those are the those are the people that should be using those more than like say you're a jogger or something. Yeah. So these are these are not like the N95, the respirators. These are just a, a face shield to protect you from sneezes and splatter. That's pretty much. But like somebody at a grocery store, for example, like right. if you're if you're working with the public all day long. And you're taking money from someone, you need to kind of like have a barrier between you yeah. and the person, and so that's a great solution, and it costs like you know nothing. Especially so, when you want your face to be seen, and you can actually like co- like communicate a little better with people when you're working. Right. The the exactly. mouth being covered changes communication. I know you have to so emote much. your eye. You have to learn to emote yeah. your eyes more. Like here's a smile. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> have you done the thing where you do the eyes but you don't do the smile? It's very yes. fun, and it makes me feel kind of condescending because I'll be like. No, or it's tell like me. it's like oh, thank you so much. Yeah. So you're saying your mouth is covered and you can do whatever you want. Yes. Yeah. So I'll be like, I'll try to mess with it and look like I'm smiling, and then I'll realize when we first I've talked about this before, but when we first started doing it, I forgot what the purpose of the masks were, and I was in the store and I had to sneeze, so I took the mask off, sneezed in my hand, <laughs> put the mask back. Worst day of it was like I and it, I know there's security cameras around. And I was like, that's gonna be uh, a video that's gonna be seen by a lot uh, of people. I've turned into the thing i hate yeah exactly that's, that's, that's fantastic man <laughs> I'm that's in, awesome so now, i'm an idiot my, my question really quick about still about the face shield things is like would you would you recommend that like non-service non-medical industry people use that at some point well, or well it just depends on i, I i'm first of all I'm not a doctor but uh, like for example if i was working at a grocery store checkout line or if i was working in constant contact with the public, or if I went back to like work at a plant around other people, I would I would probably wear this. Yeah. Wow. So I um, wonder if the Valley folk could use those and then <laughs> you know show everybody the links to get their own for their communities and stuff, and then we could be like in the office together because essentially that's kind of like, you know, a more a more industrial version of wearing the mask on your face essentially. Do you guys wear a mask at the, at the office? Well, we, we haven't, haven't gone. We haven't been back to the office yet, but we did have like a we we all because we needed to see each other, right? Like we haven't been talking in this Zoom thing. Yeah. So the Zoom thing yeah. works, but it's like we needed to be in the same vicinity together. We missed each other so much. So last Friday, we actually all got into these like little like lawn chairs out in the parking lot of our business and we all put our masks on we were all six feet away from each other and we just sat there and kind of shot the shit a little bit and it was and it's really, awesome it was really nice but if we had to sneeze we took it off we sneezed into <laughs> yes, our, hand. Right into our <laughs> hand and we're then, doing our part you know <laughs> but the thing is is like we're talking about like you know because they're going to start opening up businesses roll they're going to roll out opening businesses and and like even universal studios is opening up and city walks opening up for like a couple of hours a night now and it's so strange and very weird and 
So we're thinking of as a business getting back and like, when are we going to roll out and go back into the office? I think we just just need to get, we just need to get the antibodies test, which we can do pretty easily. And you can just sign up online, then do the drive through thing. But if we all, if we all had them, I imagine we'd be, you know, fine to at least do the the only problem with that is, is kind of like the effective, the effectiveness of each way to test, right? Like there isn't one that's like the best possible method, right? I mean, I'm willing to take any kind of, yes at this point like but there's like false positives be, yeah. and false negatives with all of them it's like how are we ever gonna know well, which what's the right way to do well, i'll like, trust I what think the test you... says i think yeah that's my but that's my own you have to trust what you trust but like sure, sure, i sure. can't you know i think i think at some point we do have to coalesce back right like it's like you know how there's a bunch of drops on a plate or something they start popping together boop, 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 you know yeah. what i'm talking about like mercury yeah. exactly oh. <laughs> yeah. I, I think our little quarantine cells at some point we're gonna have to start like you know that little group becomes a big group. Oh, you know? that's a good way to put it. Yeah, I see. Yeah, what you're and so I and then you know we're gonna have people that oh there was an outbreak over in, in that other group, but you know we're you know, I, I think at some point that's gonna have to happen. And the key is to you know once that that group I don't know this is just how my family's thinking about it. As that group becomes bigger, then you really have to think about who's interacting with that group. Yeah. Yep. So. Mm-hmm. It's a kind of interesting your, thing. It's almost someone was I forgot who who was saying it was like the MySpace like your top oh the top five, eight or, everybody is their top, top eight. eight yeah yeah the top like who's your top eight like who are the eight people in your life that you're gonna trust and be like were you quarantining were you safe are you cleaning your you know are you being safe yeah. and who do I trust and like so, dude did you hear that Michael was hanging out with David the other day dude. whoa 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 <laughs> David's not in the circle. <laughs> Hey Who's guys, my, such listen, a... hey, my drug dealer is in my top eight. Okay, it's <laughs> fine, dude. It's an exercise in honesty, and all it is is the sneeches on the beaches with the stars on their bellies, and which ones have it, and which ones don't. It really is. It's so strange. You're like, not wrong, man. It's You're like, not right. It was actually a thing in our family because, like, my extended family, because early on I was like, Mom, Dad, you gotta stay. And then the face shield thing started, and I went out, and it was like wearing all these super, you know protective masks and stuff but i was out Mm -hmm. so i was essentially a straight up hypocrite to my family because it's like hey you got to do this thing oh by the way i'm not doing this thing yeah but you're a little younger right and like we it's super affects older people but now we don't even know right because now younger people are starting to be affected by it so who knows who knows that's the biggest thing we don't hey what did that feel like when you licked it just then i saw you like that what did it feel like to you <laughs> yeah i bet it's the same i bet it's the same <laughs> Dude, um, i was well, cracking up with that shit that crap last night i was very like that's so good i was like that's it is because in the podcast good. tyler's like well i guess most things and Corey's like no everything yeah, you can what's, tell what's, whatever. what's their name of the podcast again? It's called Psycho Babble. I made a note to Psych- mention it because I didn't want to sound like I was directly ripping it off. <laughs> it's um, great. Well, listen, we've hit the hour mark and we can keep going if you want, but I know you're a busy guy, Destin. But listen, we got to have you back, right? Like, this was fun. I, I appreciate you having me here. Yeah. There's so, so much, much more stuff I want to talk about. Like, I know. I had your, so many questions, but like, your sporting videos, yeah. like. The you guys, he's done videos where he he did the world record with a machine for the longest home run ever, and oh, it's yeah. frightening and dangerous. Really, <laughs> that was that was pretty stupid. To be, to be completely, <laughs> to be completely honest with you, yeah, that that was that was nuts. But how, like, how I want to pitch you some ideas. I want you to build a machine with Mark that will launch a football the perfect spiral, and then you bring me in and we go and we make the world record for the longest touchdown throw ever. Where we launch Ooh. this thing. Oh, and you catch it or something? And I'll catch it on the other side. <laughs> That's I want to awesome. do this. That's really good. You guys need to just do that. <laughs> That'd be awesome. Like, yeah. Joe, we'll just fly you there and we'll just do it. We won't need to. He's going to build a machine that'll throw it to me from <laughs> From <laughs> here, from Space Camp. <laughs> going to do it at Space Camp, launch it all the way there. That's how <laughs> we're doing Destiny. it. Yeah, and I wanted to like get a, I wanted to get a little rival, rivalry between you and Elliot with the, the, the Southern League football, with the college. That's what I was going to yeah. ask. Are you an Alabama fan? I, I went to Bama, man. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah where, where'd you go? Florida. Oh, yeah. Oh, man. Yeah, yeah that, that's a good school. <laughs> yeah, so when I was in school. It's good science um, department. I studied zoology. Really, did you really? Mm-hmm. I've actually been to meetings at, at that. Yeah, yes, it's a great school. You have a really awesome school. It was a nice so, zoology department. 
<laughs> yeah. The um, basketball. What what year did you graduate? Are we not going to say that? No, no. I, I I graduated 2009, 2010. So I was the back to back championship in basketball, and then the football with the Tebow. So I got real a real good injection. Holy cow! And then man. I left, and every everything went uh, went to crap a little bit. But because you left. Yeah, Look, yeah. I'm very good at both football and basketball. So <laughs> you, you had a you, yeah. you, you had a phenomenal college experience. Uh, but man. dude, Alabama, man, that's it's got to be great to just win ev- win football every year all the time. Now, now, I mean, I when I went to school, it was bad. Like it was really bad. Oh, but really? Yeah. I, but we can agree the SEC is awesome, yes, right? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Ever, ever, right? Like I, it I root all is. SEC. Yeah. I root SEC for every. Yeah, it's Florida it's and then SEC, and then but when it it's I do like Auburn though. Do you hate Auburn with a fiery passion? No, I don't. The only okay. time I don't root for Auburn is when they're playing Alabama in the Iron Bowl. Cool. But yeah. I root for Auburn a hundred percent. You're just a conference time. guy. You're like I love my conference. I do. <laughs> mm-hmm. like, I go I go states. You know, because we're the underdogs. You know it. You know, except for football, yep. that's really all we have. Just let us have this one. Exactly. Thing, yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> just let us have the one thing, dude. How so are you? Are you a huge like? Are you? Do you like uh, <laughs> identify by Alabama football during college season? Like, are you? Like, oh yeah. So how? Absolutely. Do you, Where's your mind going into this year where we may not even have it? Oh. Yeah, that's su- super, super interesting. And why would you do that to me? <laughs> <laughs> hey, we're going to end the but podcast yeah. real quick. Um, isn't that thing that's gonna that you enjoy every year? That's going to be that's yeah. gonna suck when it doesn't happen. It's going to so, suck um, when it doesn't you so exist, much. right? Hey, you guys keep <laughs> yeah. talking about sports. I'll be over here at Disneyland. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. No, but I have thought about that. I have thought about that. It's gonna. I think that's going to be what breaks people. Like I was reading yeah. about the, the pandemic in 1918. Um, a lot of colleges didn't have a season. Georgia Tech was the dominant team at the time, and they played the most games. And so I think, like, I can totally envision people in Alabama being like, all right, here's what we're going to do, right? All right, so we're going to take Bryant-Denny Stadium, 90,000 people, going to cut that in half, Right. All right, and so you just set just a, a seat in between <laughs> seat each part, of yeah. you, like yeah. I can, dude. Like, like we we can. I'm sure there will be somebody that figures this out. I got this know? guy Destin on the phone. He's making molds for body suits. <laughs> <laughs> it's I a think, small think, operation in Huntsville. <laughs> it's gonna happen. Yeah, I think the more challenging thing is keeping the players safe. Because I mm-hmm. I was watching a major league baseball player today. There's a there's a new minor league team in Huntsville called the Rocket City Trash Pandas. That's They're great. amazing. Yeah, it's like everybody's wearing their shirts. Oh, great. The, the trash pandas is like the coolest shirt ever. That's so, cool. I dig that. Yeah, get you one. Shoptrashpandas.com. I'm trying to help people <laughs> yeah. do their shirts because they built the stadium and they can't play baseball. Oh, so it's like, man. Yeah, I really want them to stay. That's so rough. anyway, I, I was watching some Major League Baseball players today, and they are talking like, hey, yeah, we could do an abbreviated season, but you're putting us at risk. And so that's where the weird part is. Well, there's I've seen there... some... Oh, go oh, ahead, Jeff. Oh, oh, yeah, I was uh, listening to Bill Simmons' podcast, and they talk about the NBA and some of the solutions that they're coming up with. And they're they're talking something is like send all of these teams down, get them all tested, make sure they're all fine, and then you put them in quarantined hotels. So it's like circus, circus isn't being used. That's where the Mavs are, and the whole season could be in Vegas, where they just wow. play in a, like uh, MGM. Actually, yeah. they could they could have all the players in wow. MGM and a court. And bring in people for broadcast reasons, because that's what this is all about when Dude, it comes to if the, the capitalistic put, side, is if, the TV money. If they put all of football in Vegas, oh, <laughs> oh, that would be God. amazing. You shall see, not see me. That's the crazy thing, is like they're, if they do that, they're going to it's going to be a magnet for people, right? Like how are they going to keep people it's locked away down. from that? It, that's the thing. It's locked down. It's shut down. It's no spectators. It's literally for broadcast yeah. and, and television and to keep the money flowing throughout these so, games. Man, I just, th- so I in just the, don't in that know case, how that looks. You know, I mean, look, I'm not yeah. the sports guy here, but like, I just don't know how that looks. But but the thing you have to think about is like these these are like parents. These players are parents and husbands and and wives and all this stuff. So they would have to like be away from their family yeah. because they're not in the the bubble, right? So you yeah. gotta be mm-hmm. like, that's a so you pay them more. That's so you, you pay them more, or you <laughs> who knows? Like I don't know. Like hey, do you want to come and be with the team? And if one of them is like, I, I need to be with my family. They bring up some G leaguers or something. I don't know. I and mean, it's all just hypothetical, you, but uh, you but there's win, conversations. You win and you celebrate yeah. by going back and being alone. 
in your hotel <laughs> no. room. We yeah, gotta, I won. Time to go be in my hotel room. Yeah. <laughs> we're going to beat this. We're going to beat we this. We are. Oh, yeah. We it's, are going to beat happening. this. It's just about when and how, <laughs> you know? <laughs> it's going to happen. I mean, like, you guys are doing a great job of, of like, I enjoy watching your stuff all the time. Thank, Thank you, man. And it makes, man, me, and it makes me happy. Well, so, you, like, what you're doing is very, very important right now. So I appreciate it. Thank you very Thank much. You, well, Thank you, dude. Thank you, dude. And, and it is important for you to be out there and um, influencing an entire generation of, of kids and people that are, that want to get into this stuff. And I think that's an incredible thing that you two. There, there, there's an incredible mutual respect going on here. And you definitely yeah. have some new fans for sure. Yeah, I love I everything that you do, man. You are you put intellectualism on a pedestal, and and that's important. And you make it accessible, and I and I think that's important too because even for me, I find myself being hesitant maybe to challenge uh, my brain and my heart and my efforts. But even just you right now going like, I have an idea, and I'm just gonna do it. That's inspiring, and I I want you to do it forever. And if there's any project. It, that will you see us helping in any way we probably need that push and if you called up and said help me do this we'll go ha and then we'll do it <laughs> but we would love to to be attached to anything you do in any any way shape or form well thank you for saying that i really appreciate it and and what i really respect about you guys is how real you are and you you take that extra step to be real like all of you i've looked at your social media independently and like i i can tell that you're real people and you don't you know, sometimes we're, we're we put on our happy face or whatever, but you guys also are just real, Thanks, and, I, and I can I can tell. So I really appreciate that. We're definitely I, uh, trying to be for sure. So thank you for noticing that. Yeah, yeah, you are. I can, it's 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 coming across loud and clear. I really appreciate that's, it. That's uh, that's so. the goal. And I would just like to say it's been nice to listen to a southern accent a little bit. So I appreciate <laughs> that's it. What I'm talking about. <laughs> it's been a roll while. time. Yeah. Even if they say roll time, I hear it. It's good. <laughs> I thought Soothing. Elliot's might over the podcast start to come back. What? <laughs> I know. I, I expected I, yours to come back a little bit. I made a note before we started to make sure that I speak very normally. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it, it, it'll stick on you, won't, won't it? Yep. Yeah. I'm sorry about that. Yeah. All um, right, man. Well, Destin, is there any like projects or anything else you'd like to shout out, kick to, um, give some what, uh, love? I, I appreciate you asking. Uh, my friend Matt and I, we have a podcast. It's called No Dumb Questions. And today we talked about, we t interviewed one of my professors about fusion propulsion, and it was crazy cr insane. So, Damn, yeah. That's great. That's really yeah. cool. And Matt, yeah. So it's called No Dumb Questions. We'd appreciate it if you check it out. Thanks. For sure, man. Okay. Yeah. We'll is it okay if we uh, is it okay if we throw people your way from oh. no dumb questions to your podcast? Yes, of course, please, please. please. Yeah, if totally. you Let's want, <laughs> we yeah. will not stop you. One hundred percent. Let's do it. Yeah, <laughs> that's wonderful. Well, thank you. Uh, man. Well, we got to get you back. Please come back because I also had a million questions about all the things that you build and the engineering and the science and all that. I just and watched a flat Earth documentary. I got questions. Out the <laughs> 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 but uh, please good. come back, and, and and we would love to have you back. I would love to. Thank you so much for the invite. Wonderful. I really appreciate it. Thank you. So Let us know that. if you're ever in LA too, because uh, we would totally get you in for one of our like dumb games. You like trivia bidet? You like bidets? Oh, you love bidets? Uh, <laughs> only warm, wa only warm water bidets. <laughs> I actually, and I we actually can bought that. my. <laughs> and Destin, the end of this podcast is going to be similar to the beginning. You're not going to know when it's going to end. We're just going to start talking. <laughs> it's just it ended it's just an hour happen. ago. <laughs> We've just been hanging out. <laughs> I'm totally good with it, man. Well, guys, thank it. you for listening to the Valley Cast, and Destin, thank you for joining us. And as always, if you'd like to become a patron of the Valley Folk, please go to Patreon.com/slash/TheValleyFolk, where you can get this podcast earlier than all the other plebs. And also, the Valley Cast channel, YouTube.com/slash/TheValleyCast, will have the video version of this, so you can see our lovely friend Destin and his wonderful taxidermied mouse and cool props <laughs> and stuff. And uh, if you guys want to see that, definitely go to YouTube.com/slash/TheValleyCast, where there's other cool podcasts and more to come so thank you guys for listening